too many. There's there's just too many, Tim. Too many of what? The, too too many books. Oh, okay. or, or more specifically, too many good books from the behavioral science world in 2021. Just to to limit it to a short list. How how I you I don't know if we can do this. I think by my count, we talked to nearly 30 authors this year. Pub- at least we published episodes on 30 authors. So if we only do our, like our top five or 10 in this list, we're going to like exclude two thirds of our authors, two thirds of our guests. That, yeah. And, uh, and they were all good books. I mean, that's yeah. why they were on the, 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 and that doesn't even include the books for the guests that we, we've interviewed, but we haven't published those series yet. <laughs> right. right. We have some of those. Right. And, and Tim, it doesn't include the books we read that were not part of behavioral groups that were just around behavioral science that we didn't get the authors to be guests. That's right. too big or too highfalutin to be on our show or something. Or I don't dead. Know I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're not going to get William James to come back and talk about pragmatism. Oh, that's true. That's true. And but man, I, like I said, there's just too many, too many books. Yeah, I don't think I've read this many books set actually ever this is more than i ever read in grad school i think yeah I, I, yeah um yeah probably in grad school i read a lot of papers right sure. okay but but high school i i read all those little you know zane gray or whatever those little kind of, there was that one summer i think i read you know okay and and then, and then i don't when, think that i don't those okay like okay an hour there, to read. There, there were there were the times when i had to get my kids to sleep when they were young and i would yeah. read them you know, good night moon and, you know, the very hungry caterpillar and, and where the wild things are. Yeah. (laughs) Hippos go berserk. You know, one hippo all alone calls two hippos on the phone, three hippos at the door, bring along another four. I mean, I can remember that was like five pages of the book right there. That's because you might've read that 50 times or 500 times, but (laughs) okay. That doesn't count. Those are like (sighs) eight minute books. That All that right. that does not count. Yeah. Um, so if we take that into consideration, yes, this was a year of reading books. Yeah, and so we decided that to talk about uh, some of the great books that we read, along with something doing something kind of different. We're including Louise Ward, who is the founder of the Behavioral Science Book Club. And by the way, if you want to join this book club, it is fantastic. We're going to have links in the show notes because she, uh, she does a fantastic job of organizing this this group. But we included Louise in our conversation today to, to highlight what we thought the best books of 2021 are. Right. And what we discovered is that beyond the fact that Louise read more books than we did, which is amazing, right? Yeah. Above it and everything else. And and that they were all fantastic books yeah. and books that we weren't necessarily aware of, which is freaking fantastic, is that she is very organized, very methodical, and has just read from authors that we didn't even know existed. Right. right. But then, Tim, what that highlighted for me is that how organized and methodical she is just really shown a light on how unorganized and random we are in, in how we do this. Well, there's that. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but definitely she does a fantastic job of curating the, the behavioral science book club and please go out there, sign up for it. They, they talk to these authors. You get a chance to potentially even ask them questions. So it is a fantastic opportunity and really, really urge people. If you haven't already done that, please do that. But let's pick up our conversation with Louise when she started to share her top 10 list with us. Yeah, so I think I think with this, so, you know, we always do our top 10 books of the year. And gosh, you've been, as you said, you, you've the, the book club and everything else has been fantastic. So we thought it'd be great to get a another voice besides Tim and mine in the book conversation here. So I don't know, Tim, have you had a chance to, to kind of highlight your, your books that you wanted? I mean, well, I, I started by just writing up how many books uh-huh. that books that we've read for the podcast that have been published. So that does include all the books that we read because we've still, we've read a bunch of books that for yeah. conversations that have not been published yet, but um, I count 27 books. Or, or Louise, how many how many books have you read? I this haven't year? counted. I'll be absolutely honest with you. What I tend to do is, and I think I shared the link with you. I don't know how many are in yeah. there. What I tend to do is, I make a, I just open up a list in um, Amazon, 
and throw the book in there when I've read it. And then at least I've got sort of something to refer back to. Um, and of course, not all of them are newly published this year, but a very large number of them were. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and and we've never stuck with it. It has to be published this year. That's not, it, it's books we've read this year that we just no. think are fantastic. So no. um, I just also, I just looked at the behavioral scientist book list, which is not 10. Uh, there must be a couple dozen. Yeah. And I was really sad to see that 30% of, of that list, I wasn't even aware of those books. Mm -hmm. And that just pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know about them all. <laughs> I want to know about those books. And there's a couple on there that, uh, well, there's several that I'm very interested in reading and, and a couple that I can instantly see as, uh, as great podcast guests, but golly Moses, this is just, um, this is just hard. So, uh, Kurt, so had, you you're, you're probably really prepared. Kurt, you've probably got your list, I, right? I, yeah. You want to see my preparedness? I just wrote down a bunch of books right there <laughs> that I was just thinking. Yeah, there you go. So I, I, I did, I did kind of prepare because what I started doing was I started writing down how many books have come out in like, 2021. First of all, let's acknowledge that maybe because of rather than in spite of. Uh, the situation we're all in. What a great year for books. They have just oh my God. flooded out, haven't they? Yeah, just all yeah. those ones that were in the in the drawer, part written, <laughs> whipped out with nothing better to do, and off to the publisher. <laughs> Thank God the publishers kept pushing stuff out too, uh, and the, and the PR companies have been incredibly busy as well. And uh, you know. wh what a year for three classic books to be followed on as in thinking fast and slow getting noise yeah the new edition of cialdini mm -hmm. and nudge i nudge mean what are the odds the final edition or however <laughs> they the they talk about it I, I am just amazed at to your point louise i think the the books that came out this year i don't know if it's if if this is just you know recency bias on my part but Man, it seems like it it was just much more of a flood than it has been in the past. And maybe it's because, again, you know, we're getting more people kind of focused in on this area of behavioral science. And so there's maybe more behavioral science books that are coming out because you're getting those researchers like a Katie Milkman, who has been doing fantastic work for years and years and years and finally getting that that popular press book out. And I think there's, you know, a, a, a lighty uh, uh, clots on, on subtract, subtract Again, yeah. you know, fantastic, fantastic research for years. And now it becomes into the, the book side of things. And so maybe that's part of it as well. But so I, I think what we should do is let's just get going on this and let's uh, so let's we'll 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 ask our guest if you're just a, a top 10 book okay. for you this year okay, what is your so first pick i'm gonna pick? call my 10 and you can get your lists out and and do a tick it's like bingo <laughs> <All right>. so, <laughs> okay mine, i'm so organized mine are actually in order of how they were published through the year and oh my I only, gosh See, that's only better than chosen us. 2021 books because otherwise it just would have been far far too difficult so my number one book is think again adam grant mm. Okay. For number two, I've got, I don't think you'll have this, um, Brand Splaining by Jane Cunningham, Philippa Roberts. No. Two amazing marketers. Number three, I've got Grace Lorden's Think Big. Number four, I've got What We Are to Each Other by Minouche Shafiq. Number five, I've got Subtract, Lydie. Number six, I've got The Sleeping Beauties by Suzanne O'Sullivan. And if you guys don't know about that, I'm going to rave about it. Number seven is, <laughs> I wish I'd written them in order, uh, Noise. Number eight, This Is Your Mind on Plants, Michael Pollan. Number nine, Nudge, the new one. And number <laughs> ten, <laughs> 4,000 Weeks by Oliver Berkman. You know, what What I love about this is I'm looking at this and I can go, um, all right, subtract, mm -hmm. noise, 
and I didn't have think again. We didn't interview Adam Grant, so we, I, I didn't. I mean, I, I actually bought the book, but I have not read it yet. So yeah. I, I, it's one of these pieces. So I'm looking at this going, we got eight new ones for me. I don't know, Tim, you probably have read <laughs> all could, 10 of I them and then they're on your list. 20. So. <laughs> nope. There's about six on when I started making the list, you know, books published 2021. I, actually, I had to stop at 60. So I was like, hold on a minute. I, I won't even remember any of these to comment on them. So I'm wasting my time. <laughs> Well, let, let, I want to talk about a couple that you mentioned that are, might be a little bit more obscure. Forgive, uh, I'm begging the authors uh, in the, the use of that term. Uh, but brand splaining first, tell us a little bit about that. Okay, brand. Why did why did that make your top ten? So that made my top ten because it followed on quite soon after I had read uh, Invisible Women by Caroline Crowley Perez, which I wouldn't call myself a feminist. I would just the usual, do the usual thing of, oh, I've never been paid any different to a man. I've been treated badly. I've never been treated any differently. I'm like, not aware of anything. That would have been my line. Then I read Caroline Crealdo Perez, and I was like, whoa, hold on a moment. <laughs> There's a lot more to this, and became like an ardent feminist overnight. Drove everybody mad, quoting everything from the book. Now, on the back of that, then, I met Jane Cunningham and Philippa Roberts, the authors of Brand Brand Splaining. They're both two amazing marketers. And what they do in their book is they point out things that we just don't see in advertising, Um, gaps between um, uh, women in media, Uh, needs ignored misrepresented or basically industry just doesn't understand women and the thing is once they start pointing it out that's it then you know you can't replace the blinds because they've made you aware like Caroline Criado Perez to this other level that we all just accept but once it's pointed out you're like oh hold on a minute (laughs) hold on whoa back there (laughs) <laughs> Which is always interesting, right? Because otherwise it just, it, it passes by. Yeah. It, okay. What about Sleeping Beauty? That was the oh, other one that no. caught my attention. I don't attention. know how I heard about this book. Susan O'Sullivan. Uh, the Sleeping Beauties and Other Stories of Mystery Illness. They are diagnostic mysteries. Oh. So it starts out with in Sweden where these refugee children basically are going to sleep, young girls, falling us going to sleep and just they don't they don't wake up they're not unconscious it's a completely strange phenomenon and they sleep for months and years it's absolutely bizarre you've got to go and look it up and in new york there's stories of students and they develop contagious seizures so it's a little bit sort of going back 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 to all of that stuff in victorian times when there were like in in the french uh, hospital, Sal Pietro, where they brought out the women who all sort of, you know, swooned and had seizures. And, you know, it, it's almost like a modern phenomenon of that. It's uh, catching between these communities. And uh, there was something in the U.S. Embassy in Cuba. Oh, sure. Yeah, and, yeah the, and the Havana effect, they call it. it. Oh, yeah. great. Yes. The employees all complained of headaches and memory loss. Mm-hmm. So it's all these sort of stories where the impact of somebody else uh, then creates this whole sort of phenomenon. Fascinating. Fascinating. Wow. I'm glad to hear about those those two books because those are not even on my radar. Great. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Same here. Same here. So... All right, Tim, I'm going to turn it over to you. Do you have a top 10 list or do you just want to, do you want to, should we go back and forth between ours? And yeah, then, let, let, and yeah. then you will name every single one that I want and, and then I will be on <laughs> well, see, that's, that's the risk, right? I want to start with Dolly Chug's uh, The Person You, you Mean to Be. Oh, yeah. Because yes. that was just inspirational. I just felt inspired by that. And that's a really good feeling to have when you're reading a book uh, to so be so charged up and so positive. And so, uh, okay. So, you know, call me Pollyannish for liking Disney endings, but I, I got to say that it really <laughs> left me with a lot of hope around the human race. And, and in the last year, it, that was a good thing for me to have hope. It, it, you know what? I, I You nailed it. It's the Disney kind of esque 
ending to that because she brings up a whole bunch of really crappy shit about yeah, how yeah. you, you know the, the the world that we live in and this idea that you know we do not realize how good we have it particularly you and me tim as as you know old white males in living in this world and you know the the story of looking out her window and seeing that person walking against the wind or walking yeah. with the wind and the differences that that makes it just a fantastic book fantastic uh insights on there i will go the the book that i got really inspired on was um you have more influence than you think by vanessa bonds that that is for me i i it was one of those books that I, I was going into reading it, kind of going, ah, all right, this is, sounds like influence or whatever else. But it really brought to light, I think, a lot of different insights that I was not, you know, a, a lot of the research that we, we people write in their books, I've, I've heard before, We because that's the world we live in. There was a lot of research in this book that I just had not heard before. And so it it enlightened my world in other words so that was that was for me yeah kind of off the beaten path i i was really impressed with uh, chester elton and adrian gostick's anxiety oh, yeah. i thought anxiety was just uh, again one of those books that sort of put a name to a problem that we have in our world in our corporate worlds especially but in our private lives uh that uh with and with good research behind it and uh and chester and adrian just write with such sort of heart and tenderness. I really, yeah. I really appreciated it again this year. And I think it, for, for me, Tim, it was partly because we interviewed him. And and so I don't know, I, I that would not have been a book that I would have picked up, right? right. It was right. just because we interviewed him and then hearing the story from his own perspective and some of the background there just made everything within that book a little bit more um, just, you know, there, right? It, it made it feel like, Oh yeah, this is a, a, it's a big issue and B here are things that we can do about it, which is another piece of, for me, the next book that I'm going to talk about is, is, um, you're invited by John Levy. And again, I, I probably would not have picked up that book except for the fact that we had, we had talked with him. And, and again, for me, that the reason that that book was really interesting is it talked about a way of thinking of, of being, it's, it's kind of like, you know, you have more influence. It was some of this insights that, I hadn't really put together or really didn't get all of them. And this idea of you can create your world through the connections that you have, or you can improve your world by, by improving the connections that you have and the conversations that you have with people that is still a line that I just, have, it's kind of become a mantra with me. And so it's really changed the way that I'm looking out at the world based on just that one line from, from basically his book. So, <sighs> I'm I'm at a loss as to as to where to go next because there were so many good books that we that we read this year and I kind of hate to be pulling off sort of just the the top of the list but and this might be on your list as well but useful delusions by Shankar Vedantam ah, it is it's on my list there yeah sorry about that Kurt but um, <laughs> but I I think that what Shankar did was pull on on something that we need to adhere to. There's so you know so much of the early uh, writings around behavioral economics, behavioral sciences in general. We're like, oh, humans are kind of stupid. We do all these stupid. You know, now of course the academics. You know, I think about George Lowenstein and and uh, Richard Thaler. Like their papers never were, were never condescending. There's nothing condescending about the human condition, but the popular press has kind of manipulated it, uh, the as the application of behavioral science in a negative way. And Shankar's book kind of said, hey. We need this stuff. Biases are good. Heuristics are good. Here's some here's some delusions that we hold on to that are actually very positive in our lives. I liked it. Yeah. And and for me, and Luis, I don't know if you read the book, but the, the, the piece that was for me was, all right, he's not saying that every delusion is good, but there is a level of delusion that we all have. This idea that my wife is the you know, the the prettiest woman in, in the world, that she, you know, that my kids are fantastic. There's there's power in that that allows us to overlook some of the things that if we were just purely looking at reality, uh, you know, our lives would be much worse for that. And so that I think is good, which then leads me into my book uh, that I wanted to talk about is How to Talk to a Science Denier by Lee McIntyre. Because again, we're talking about, you know, with Chonker and delusions, there's a certain point where the delusion goes too far and then it becomes a negative aspect. And with with Lee's book, 
that was, I mean, just the opening chapter alone uh, of going to the science, you know, convention or the, the flat earth convention in Denver. Uh, you could just you could stop reading the book well you don't want to stop reading the book there but you could stop reading yeah. the book there because that is just a fantastic exploration into you know this whole underworld and and what i loved about the book too is is to your point it's not like he's talking down he he, he brings up this this perspective that these people who hold these beliefs aren't stupid mm. and that is something i think that we we often overlook that this idea that they are actually intelligent people. There's just something missing. And so this is a it more it's about identity and social identity. And how do we get that emotional uplift by being part of something, even if that part of something is totally wacky and crazy. So Luis, did you, you read that book though, right? Um, I did read that book, yes, and yeah. totally agree with you. Once you launched into all it as it did very quickly, this flat earth, you're like Oh wow! This is this is like the equivalent of aliens. This is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, right. This is just right. this, it was like joy. This is fa- absolutely fantastic. But what I did like about it was uh, beyond this, it was an eminently practical book. Yeah. You really felt okay. If I'm going to be using this book for the tools, they are there. So yeah, yeah I I really enjoyed that. Again, we had John Levy in the group as a guest. So I've read your invited. Um, liked it because of like for yourselves the concept of the community which is what we've sort of I suppose what we've all got in common yeah and neither of these guys would ever use the term irrational to describe people you know I don't like to say irrational I had Rory say it recently I think I had Brie Williams say it recently so people are starting to say well hold on a moment and this is sort of the develop now on it's gone pop it's done the pop for enough years to get people really jazzed up about it which is what it did, fantastic. And now yeah. it's almost being, I think, alongside the concept of uh, all the concerns about uh, whether, you know, experiments can be repeated on top of that, also people sort of almost reanalyzing concepts, which is yeah. great. And isn't that the point of all these things? Question things all the time. Not only yeah. don't take things for granted, the basis of behavioral science, let's now not take behavioral science for granted and make sure that all those things that are out there are still real, are still practical, right. you know. So I think that's fantastic. Well, well and along those lines, the, uh, a book that was not written this year, but we talked to Joel Weinberger mm. uh, very early in the year, and his book, Unconscious, uh, is a super geeky, super you know, a uh, scientific book. Uh, I, I think it's even more scientifically oriented than even noise might be. Um, Cause I thought that was pretty geeky, but wow. I, I felt like unconscious really laid out the foundation for a lot of priming, a lot of, a lot of work that John Barge has done um, and that, that we love and context and decision-making and, uh, and Joel just did it in, I think, it, yes, it is a, like a lecture, but it is so <laughs> it is so crisp and so clear, and and I I really enjoyed that. And it's not for everybody. That's going to be like a level forty two book. I don't yeah, know. that's a, it's a heavy book. <laughs> yeah, it, you but put it's, noise up there as a heavy book. Yeah, yeah. It, that goes up to oh, the level God. beyond this noise. Is another oh, level. Yeah, a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, 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 I'm I, short on time here, so I'm going to just run through a couple more here that I think are, are important um, just in great. this. And so, you know, we've already talked about subtract. Thought subtract was another great one. Again, just because it changes. It was stuff that I hadn't heard of, different pieces around that. The sweet spot, I know Mary, uh, our, our research you know, person, was like, oh, that seems like a really negative book. This idea that you know, pain can actually be part of the human condition and different pieces. But it, it brings a different perspective into, into our world. I thought that one um, was really wonderful. And that was Paul Bloom. Sorry, Paul I, had Bloom, to, yeah. I had to go look at the book to remember <laughs> actually who, who wrote that. And then the one that I have, it's an old, old, old book, but I just absolutely loved it this year was um, Zebras Don't Get, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers by um, Robert Sapolsky, who wrote my most favorite book of the last five years, Behave. And so I'm starting to read his other stuff. And it just goes into the biology of, of stress and the biology of humans. And it's just, again, fantastic. Tim, rattle off your, your last ones here. Uh, the, the last ones that, that I want to address are 
Let's see. Um, Sounds very formal, Tim. <laughs> that was that was. That's we, right. we are we are the most formal, you know, button down <laughs> podcast you have ever heard. So uh, that, uh, that's a lie, folks. If yeah. you haven't realized that already, that's, uh, Logan Yuri's <laughs> book on relationships, oh, yeah. the uh, How Not to Die Alone. Yeah. I just thought that she just did a great job uh, on on that. She explained it well. She's uh, you know pretty informal, and I mean, I'm not in the dating game by any means, but it was really a wonderful thing mm-hmm. to reflect on. What are the the core attributes of what? make relationships work. And she built a lot on um, Finkel's work and uh, just really, really great stuff. So I, I really love that. And I also really enjoyed um, the the Super Trends book uh, by Rohit Bhargava. Oh, yeah. That um, was good That too. was really that. fun. I know. That was yeah. really fun and in large part because he talked about the process that he used. Like this isn't this isn't beyond normal humans. You don't have to be an alien to figure out how to identify trends. You can just keep track of things and sort of they'll they'll bubble up almost naturally. And uh, he didn't present it in like you know all you have to do is save a dollar a day and then you'll be rich kind of thing. It was it was very common sense and I thought he presented it in such a great way. I really really enjoyed both of those. And, and any anything else, uh, Louise? Uh, yes, as we've mentioned, things that are outside of the year, I have to make an honorary mention to something that a book that uh, we spoke to the author in January and the first book I read of the year, I actually said to him on the show, this is going to be my book of the year and it does actually remain my book of the year. So The Hype Machine <laughs> by MIT Professor Sinan Aral is just the most amazing amazing book you will ever read as much as we think we know what is being uh done uh, to us with us it's 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 shocking and it's a fantastic book and again a little bit like you're saying about difficult books you know it there's a lot of stuff in there but you just really just want to keep on reading because you can't believe it. I mean, mine is just, it's just scribbled on all the way through because it's one of those books where you're just going, "Wow, oh, surely not." <laughs> it's oh great God. to be it's, <laughs> it's great just, to be yeah. surprised yeah, in, in yeah. a book. Fant- it, it really is fantastic. I love that book. I'd read it again now. That that's terrific. Uh, <laughs> well, Louise, this has been so much fun. We are so grateful for your time and uh, to get some insights from the behavioral science book club uh, leader. Uh, extraordinaire. And so, so so thanks for taking our, taking your time to join us on Behavioral Groups today. It's been my absolute pleasure, Tim. It's so lovely to meet you two guys. Uh, it was such an honor uh, to receive the invitation. Uh, I did, t- took my breath away. I was like, what? What? <laughs> what is that? Tim and Kurt, <laughs> can this be? So I'm absolutely <laughs> delighted. And um, I feel we could just... Uh, chat chat on for ages as it were but ages literally ages, ages. yes <laughs> millennia we could we could go yeah could just go uh, <laughs> yes yes but thank you thanks so much my pleasure thanks very much thanks mary thanks tim thanks kurt i gotta say it's 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 too many it's 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 too many we had some really good great books this year and it's really hard to narrow that list. But if we don't narrow the list, Groovers are going to suffer from that tyranny of choice of too many options. Maybe the most important thing that we can take away from the discussion with Luis is that there are levels of complexity in behavioral science books that if you're curious about behavioral science and haven't gotten deep into it, we could start with one that we didn't even talk about, which is Predictably Irrational by Dan Ariely. And Tim, as you say, just start with chapter five on the cost of social norms. And if you make it through that chapter, then you move on to the rest of the book and the other, and and just kind of keep going from there. However, you know, I think most of our listeners probably are a little bit familiar with behavioral science and have read some of those introductory books. But so for you, maybe a way of, of kind of taking this is, is just pick one book. So to help out with this paradox of choice, consider just picking one book from the books that we just talked about. And I'd recommend that you go with your gut feel with this, that this isn't a methodical 
checks and, and, and balances here. This is the way that you and I operate, Tim, right? We just go. <laughs> just, Heuristics. Yeah, just <laughs> jump in, right? Yeah. So which one grabbed you? Which which one did you bring up? Mm. Ah, that's interesting. I think that that's a fantastic way of thinking about it. Um, and, and, and to make it easier, uh, we're going to have all the books listed in our show notes. Okay, so all you have to do is just click on that link and it'll take you right out to a book. It could be Think Again by Adam Grant. Louise loved that one, right? Or it could be yeah. my pick from Dolly Chug, you know, The Person You Were Meant to Be, or it could be one of those that Kurt picked. Or, oh, wait, we know that. It wouldn't be one of Kurt's books, so I, I don't hey, hey. skip over those. <laughs> I didn't write the book. I mean, yes, I would understand if I was if it was a book I had written. You wouldn't choose that one. I understand that, but these people, they they all are fantastic authors, and yeah, they yeah. they they were there. So yeah, fair right. enough. That's that's true. They are great authors. Okay, so to to overcome cognitive overload. We recommend that you just choose the first one that grabbed your attention or interest, or even just pick a random number, and then you count down and say, that's this book, and you're going to go with that. So one through 10, pick a random number and just go with that. Click on that link and then uh, in the show notes, and then boom, you've started down this journey. Sounds easy enough. Okay. Well, I think that wraps it up for another edition of Behavioral Groups. We want to thank our listeners for making 2021 the best year ever for us and we hope that you enjoyed this episode about great books great behavioral science books that you can read if you have a million extra hours in the day <laughs> well and always we hope that this conversation with louise helps you go out this week and and helps you find your groove <laughs>